lost. There was an unlucky man, and his name was Stephen. He did many ignorant things, like causing crashes, bumping into people, and sometimes even causing harm to other people. Stephen was cursed. Well, people say he was. When Stephen was younger, he aspired to be a sailor. He pictured himself riding boats and finding treasure. But it was the early 1900s, and pirates didn't exist anymore. Stephen thought, with his cursed luck, his dream was impossible. His father always deprived him. There is no such thing as luck, lad. It all comes down to skill. Stephen took in these words, but they never truly sank in. When Stephen was on the sidewalk, he stood on his head for the fun of it. Little to his knowledge, his hair caught in the gutter. Meanwhile, the building in front of where he was trapped burst into flames. Stuck and helpless, Stephen's scalp was caressed by the fire before his father came swooping in to save him. Stephen blamed his bad luck. The year was 1909, and Stephen was finally going to accomplish his dream. Stephen, you're the captain? his father asked. I never knew you'd get this far. I know, but with my luck, it'll all go to the depths of hell replied Stephen. Don't be silly, lad, said his father. The Titanic is unbreakable. My grandfather used to tell me scary stories every Saturday night when I was a kid. I looked forward to them every single week and often leapt onto the couch and pestered him to start it already. The stories varied from being about haunted pirate ships that will splash about in the open sea hundreds of years later with no port in sight, to old schoolhouses that were all shut down fifty years ago after the mysterious disappearances of several children. One night, however, my grandfather said that he wasn't up for telling a complete story, as he had just gotten over a slight cold and wanted to rest. Instead, he told me a short little tale that he claimed was real. He asked me if I knew about the undead, like vampires and ghosts, and how they couldn't see their own reflections. I nodded in agreement. Having read all about this piece of vampire folklore in more Goosebumps books than I can remember, well, he said, taking a seat on the couch and taking off his eyeglasses. There is actually a very good reason for that, son. You see, mirrors are not simply pieces of glass that show a reflection. They are a window to another world. A world far different from our own. A world some people call the afterlife. The person you think is your reflection is actually your spirit waiting for you to join with it upon your death. Until then, their job is to keep you out of their world. But, you know why I mentioned vampires? I shook my head, enthralled and wondering in anticipation what he was going to say. Well, when they became undead, their spirit, whoosh, gone, just like that. And because of the sun, there is no one to keep them out of the other world, the afterlife. They can freely move back and forth between each world like it's an open doorway. But the truly scary thing is, you know how a vampire turns you into one by biting you? I nodded, becoming even more anxious and fearful. That isn't exactly true. What they really do? is go into the other world, wait for it to move in front of a mirror, and KILL it. He suddenly shouted, nearly making me jump off the couch. <laughs> and then, you become one of them. He then leaned in, 
trying to make me sweat a little bit more than he usually would telling me these stories. So, you have to wonder, are any of them on the other side right now, looking for you? He grinned and told me to go brush my teeth and get ready for bed, leaving me shakily heading upstairs. While I stood in the bathroom brushing my molars, I finished up and put my toothbrush down, inching closer and closer to my reflection. Curious, I pressed my hand against it, then moved it around, trying to trick my reflection to moving the wrong way. <laughs> After a few seconds of doing this, I gave up, telling myself that even if Grandpa's story was true, no one would want my spirit. I was just some random little kid who hadn't done anything wrong. Only moments later, however, my peripheral vision caught something in the mirror. It looked like a hand beginning to grip the doorframe. And just as I saw something beginning to lean in, I looked back at myself in the mirror. My reflection stared back at me, looking terrified, and blinked. <laughs> Hey you, Ghostball here, and I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed these spooky tales. I do apologize for all the late videos, but I'm currently working on something very special, and it'll be coming to you quite soon. It's also worth mentioning that I'm giving my YouTube channel a complete makeover. As always, don't forget to hit that like button. Leave me a comment, share with your friends, and subscribe so you can catch more of my spooky tales. And remember, Ghostpaw is always hunting, and he might just be hunting you.